post natal rearing excerpt 9 from how to rear a child at the moment a child takes birth many stars emerge from around the earth's horizon and each movement of the stars emits a specific vibration and each star has its own individual movement all these vibrations together create a musical harmony Pythagoras called this harmony of the universe this cosmic harmony regulates the state of health and illness throughout the life and then the child is born the fathomless zero occupy the cosmos and your world of finiteness it is out of this fathomless zero first evolved ether or sky then came air followed by fire the remaining elements the water the earth and thus life evolved the soul the mind and the physical body your physical body is mere showcase of all that happens at other planes or bodies if there is disturbance at the mental plane energy plane magnetic plane all these are reflected in the physical body then the question comes from where can upbringings of the child really happen since physical body and the mind are mere showcase definitely it cannot be the beginning regular ways begin here but not the spiritual upbringings can you start at bioplasmic level or you still have to go to a step beyond because of so many unresolved issues in each one of you it becomes difficult to know how to bring up the children through meditations i am creating inner balance between body and the minds of the parents only then you can attain to meditativeness when the conception takes place in such a state of lovingness or meditativeness we can create the desired being into the world such a being will be a balance between inner and the outer lives this process will continue until new man one who is beyond body mind and intellect is born out of you conception is just the beginning of sowing the seeds of harmony and bliss of course when the child is born he is so small so dependent on you that he cannot object to anything and the people around are just like you they have been helped by their parents the way you have been helped neither they have attained their natural potential nor have you the whole world is missing out in spite of all the help from the parents the family the relatives the neighbors the teachers and from the priests in fact everybody is so burdened with help under its weight that nothing can be said of attaining natural potential one cannot even attain unnatural potential one cannot move the weight on everybody's shoulder is tremendous excerpt 9 freedom not interference excerpt from how to rear a child these excerpts are quite small to the point and like dynamites i did not want these to be longer is it shorter these excerpts are 
it will be easy to grasp freedom not interference mind is basically continuously persistently tempted to interfere it lives and feeds on interference the more you can interfere the more powerful you are freedom is the way or the essence of child rearing and it is one of the most difficult things not to interfere interference is the way of the mind mind is basically continuously persistently tempted to interfere it lives and feeds on interference the more you can interfere the more powerful you are how do you measure power it is not something material you cannot weigh it but it is measured weighed in a very subtle way the way to measure is by how much you can interfere in how many people's lives the way to measure it is by how much you can interfere in many people's lives adolf hitler is powerful because he can interfere in millions of people's life you are not adolf hitler yet still you can interfere in few people's life in a way you are a little miniature adolf hitler at least the husband can interfere in wife's life and her freedom so to the wife can interfere in husband's life and freedom in the name of honesty and loyalty it is a mutual game thus both become powerful in their own rights the husband goes on interfering in his own way without being aware why they are interfering they were supposed to be together to enhance each other's life but they both are on power game of interfering with one another the husband will come late every day not that it may be essential to come late but it is a question of power ego remember if he comes home on time that means he has surrendered to the dominance of the wife i know husbands who go on sitting in offices doing nothing gossiping knowing perfectly well that their wives will be boiling they can reach home in time and that is what she wants just because she wants it is impossible for the man and his manliness to reach home in time he will come home late and the same scene is repeated every day nor is wife ready to drop asking him why he is late knowing perfectly well that whatsoever he says is a lie she knows it is a lie he too knows that she knows that it is a lie and it is a lie but it is a good beginning to fight a good start and a good excuse and then the wife goes on the same and then the wife goes on doing the same thing in her own way to prove that she is stronger husband is sitting in his car waiting for the wife to come out goes on honking his horn because he is worried he has to reach somewhere along with the family in time for the function and he does not like to reach late this is normal with husbands so the husband is worried and the wife leans out of the window and says stop honking your horn i have told you 1000 times that i am coming in a minute so husband is worried and wife leans out of the window and says stop honking your horn i have told you 1000 times that i am coming in a, in one minute 
Wives will always keep you waiting while you are already in the car just to prove her importance. This is all power game. The husband has to keep the car on waiting for the wife to come. No wife gets ready in time. Instead, she will make the husband wait while she goes on. She no wife gets ready in time. Instead, she will make the husband wait while she does nothing inside, just pretending to be busy getting ready and could come out early, but no, she does not. It is a power game, but it is a power trip. The wife wants it to be known who is the boss. You can go on honking the horn, but without the boss coming down, the car cannot move. And I inquired once from a wife, what is the matter? Every day it happens, the poor man goes on honking and they would say nothing is the matter. We are not busy, but he goes on coming home late every day and pays no attention to what we are saying. So whenever we have the chance, we take the revenge. It is simply a give and take. This is the environment that we provide for the children to grow. The child learns diplomacy from the parents. They know when to lean towards the father or the mother. In the process, they know very well what they can get from the father and what from the mother. At times, they use the authority of the mother to get the things done from the father, remember. And at times, they use the authority of the mother to get things done from the father. But the vice versa is not the case. You can use the authority of the mother to get the things done from the father, that mummy said so and so. But you cannot use the authority of the father to tell the mother that daddy said so and so. No, that cannot be possible. All the people around you have been helped greatly, greatly helped to be what they are now. And you can see in what inner state they actually are. You have been helped. Now you want to help your children too. This is the legacy that you inherited and now you want to leave as your bequest. Indeed, this is not the way to rear the children. Masters and incarnations come and go, but human ignorance and stupidity remains unchanged. All that you can do is love, be nourishing, be warm, and be accepting to the child. This is the only way you can allow the child to grow in potentiality and thus blossom into multidimensionality. Never try to impose any pattern of what he should be. Do not treat him by screen to project your unfulfilled dreams. Expose him to all that may be possible. Tell him the autobiographies and life stories of great men, men of substance, but leave his inner potential to blossom spontaneously. Prepare the soil through love. Indeed, love is the greatest understanding possible. When love blossoms from within, myriad flowers blossom. Remember when love blossoms from within, myriad flowers blossom and this is the way to rear a child. This is another excerpt from how to rear a child.